So we're going to be looking at the SimScale extension for NVIDIA Omniverse. So why is this important for us to have built this extension uh, with the SimScale team? Well, in many cases, we want to run simulations um, and we are trying to get all the geometry into one application. With Omniverse, we don't care where the geometry comes from so much. Um, so it can come from multiple applications and with the SimScale extension, it allows us then to take the collated or the collaborative model and submit that as one model up to the SimScale workbench. So here we have an application that has the context uh, and we also have the base design uh, inside this application itself. Uh, and we're going to push this across to, to Omniverse. Uh, we're also going to take our design study, our massing study, that is done in a different application, and push that to Omniverse as well. And then we're going to go and take those combined models and the way we assemble them, push it up to the SimScale workbench, do CFD compute on the base case as well as the proposed option, and download the results directly into NVIDIA Omniverse into the compiled file and visualize that data. So let's start quickly here by just making sure that we are logged in. I'm just going to log into localhost. And I want to, for the sake of assembling in SimScale's workbench, send the geometry separately. So I'm going to create separate USDs so I can build the worlds like I want to. So I'm going to take this geometry, quickly publish that out, uh, and I'm going to publish that as a context model. I'm going to make sure that I'm only selecting the selected geometries, um, otherwise it's going to take the whole file. I'm not too concerned with the rest except for some of the texturing that I'm going to do. And I'm going to export that geometry out. While I'm doing that, I will also take the base geometry, just make sure I select that again quickly, and publish that out as base geometry. You can see here that I prefix my files with the application names, so Rhino in this case, uh, so that I know where the source uh, of the geometry comes from since USD is pretty much agnostic. All right. In another application, in this case SketchUp, I have started looking at some design options of that massing study. Uh, I'm just looking at here an isolated model. I don't have all the context in it. And with the same method as before, make sure I'm logged into localhost and I can push this geometry as a design option. Again, here I put SKP in the front of it so that I know that that actually comes from SketchUp. And it's just a good uh, method of making sure you understand where the geometries come from. It could come from Blender or Unreal Engine or Revit or Maya or any of the applications that you typically use to design. All right, now that we have exported those files, uh, we can quickly go and open them up uh, and have a look at them. Here's the base geometry that I've exported uh, in NVIDIA, in Omniverse. Uh, I can also make sure that my other geometries have come through uh, in place. Here's the base design, as well as the SketchUp design model. Right. Um, I also, at this point, want to start creating a, a world file. So I've just generated a file here called World Sim Results where I can compile all these various USDs as well as the results from SimScale into a single model to be able to visualize and animate or experience it through VR and AR in, in one place, in one space. So that's pretty straightforward. I go back to my files here uh, and I simply drag them in as payloads. And you can see here that I have the base file uh, as well as the uh, proposed option inside Omniverse. I'm just going to save that quickly. Right, let's go and enable the SimScale extension. So we go to Windows Extensions and you'll see many extensions, over a thousand here already between NVIDIA and as well as the community that I have created. And we're going to type, type in SimScale and you'll see that SimScale Converter comes up. If you haven't uh, installed this before, uh, you will have an install button here. I have installed it. I've also enabled it and I've also enabled auto load. So every time I load NVIDIA Omniverse, SimScale will load. Right. And, and once you have done that, you will see that SimScale is sitting here under the window as a window that you can actually go and load up.
Right, so the first thing you need to do once you've loaded the SimScale UI is you need to log into Workbench. And this is going to log you onto the cloud uh, with your account to SimScale. Once you have logged in, uh, you will see the projects that you have on, uh, on Workbench. Uh, and you can see here that we have already pushed some of the geometry up. This is geometry that we have pushed up towards uh, SimScale. Uh, and you can go and push it from the world file, or you can go and push this from separate files. I'll show you how to do that quickly. So you can go and select all the geometry uh, that is available here and say, add select geometry, right? You can go and uh, rename that and call that uh, site context as an example. All right, and uh, I've already added the other two meshes as well here. But once you have added the geometries that you want um, and in a way that is easy for you to assemble on SimScale's workbench, meaning that you don't want to take the site twice, for example, you only want to take the site once and every option has a separate file so you can compile those in SimScale's workbench as unique CFD models without having to recreate geometries. Once you have done in that in the order that you want, you can simply go and say push or push all geometries and that will upload the files to SimScale. You can see here, it'll give you a progress bar of how far you are with your, with your file uploads. So I've done that already. So you can go and look under SimScale's workbench at the geometries. Here's that context model that has been uploaded. Uh, I also have the two option models. Uh, that I'm going to compile into a simulation, right? And from here you can determine what type of simulation you want to run or pass this off to an engineer or an uh, environmental analysis specialist to go and do this for you uh, and go and compute the simulation. And when you are done with computing the simulation, in this case we've done pedestrian wind comfort, uh, you will see the result uh, showing up here, how long it's taken, uh, and all the other data that typically comes along with it. You have the option now to post-process some of this stuff on SimScale as a workbench. Uh, you can also go and download the final solution uh, to be able to load later and we'll show you that. But once we have uploaded all that, you will immediately see it come across here on the simulation side, not the geometry side, the simulation side. And you can see you have the ability to go and download that solution that we have just run. Uh, and you can go and click the download button and that'll give you a progress bar again of how far you are with downloading. Once you have downloaded the CFD results from SimScale, um, it will open up a import options where you can start both processing that. The alternative method is you can download the solution directly from SimScale's workbench from the cloud onto your disk um, and this allows you to distribute it to maybe somebody else that might be doing the post-processing for you and don't have direct access or whatever the case might be. Uh, and with that, you have the option then to import from disks. Right. Um, in this case, we will say that we want to import when comfort. You can see there's various other methods of computational uh, results uh, or processes at least that you can go and import uh, and you will simply go and give it the folder location of where uh, you have downloaded the results to. Right. Upon doing that uh, or by bringing it directly through the dashboard here uh, as a computational run into, into Omniverse, it will open up an import options dialog box that allows you to take the data and compute it or post-process it into visible data for analysis review. Right, and as you can see here, this is this one that I've loaded from disk, but it's the same as if it comes from the cloud. Um, it will give you options what's available. There's a transient that's available. And in this case, if you want to bring in the transient, that transient data has been computed on a workbench. So it's going to bring that in from workbench as visualization models into Omniverse. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, but what we want to do now quickly is just take an average across and it's just going to load the specific wind direction that we have computed. And we've picked here a wind direction of 315 degrees. Uh, we've said we want to bring in the average results. We want to bring in the velocity. Uh, all the other uh, fields or options are exposed to you as well. 
Um, and we want to bring in, in terms of the visual representation, we want to bring in a slice geometry. Right. This allows us to adjust the normals. So if we want to put it in an XY or a YZ orientation, um, it also allows us to de define the height of that. Um, so we're going to go maybe like 20 meters as well as the location of where we want it to be. We can also bring in streamline options right? at the same time. So there's point cloud options or along a line. Both of these ask you where you want the center of this to be. Uh, let's say we're going to drop this down a little bit um, and let's make this a little bit bigger, maybe like 75 or so. Right, so we can get an idea of what's happening exactly around that building of our current condition. Um, number of points, a thousand will be good enough. I think uh, max length, I mean, you can make this uh, almost any value unless you want to really crop it. And for this scale, I'm putting the line radius of the streamlines at 0 0.25. So we have a slice, a plane, as well as some streamlines we want to generate. And we can also further go ahead and convert these results as VDB files. Um, we just need to be cautious of the aspect of the volume of the VDB. Uh, and when we do the resampling dimensions, we do that in relation to the to the aspect of the volume. This will allow us to hook up the VDB file to Omniverse Flow to be able to see proper fluid or smoke simulation. Um, not something we're going to go into this session, um, but we can definitely cover that in, in the next session. So once we have done here, we define where we want to place that. And again, I place it in a fairly logical way. So I'm going to place it under my project under CFD. Uh, and uh, you'll see that there's one or two solutions already generated from before. And it will simply go and sequentially add it to that directory structure. And I'll click the convert to USD. And it will take the data, post-process it, and convert it to a USD folder with sub-assemblies for me to go and add to my project. And once that is completed, um, I can switch off these uh, generate options. I don't want to close this because it's actually loaded. So in case uh, I want to re-import with some different positions or different height slices, whatever the case is, uh, it won't go and recache the, the geometry. Um, and you'll see here that it uh, added sequentially another uh, extraction. You've seen I've done a few uh, already um, and it's quite useful because I can load it and select different wind directions or whether I just want streamlines or slices or VDBs volu volumes uh, and import a whole bunch of them uh, while I'm busy with it so that I can start compiling at a later stage. So let's drag this in quickly here. Um, so this is a, a, st a static result at a specific wind direction uh, with some streamlines and uh, a slice, a single slice done to it. Right, so the scene is in here. You'll see that under the actors, it brings in the volume as well that was computed. So we can switch that off because we have a, a better quality volume behind us uh, that we did directly imported from the authoring applications. Um, I'll take the ground off as well. That's as part of the compute functions. And you'll see here that I have both the slice from that specific direction uh, brought into the solution. And this is the, the base solution, the benchmark solution, uh, not the option. And I also have the streamlines that have come in from that solution. I've also quickly painted in some trees so that we have a little bit more context and it looks a bit better. Uh, and uh, we can now go ahead and uh, start capturing from this file as well. Uh, we can also walk around as I do here with a controller uh, and start analyzing what is actually happening with the wind around our project. Right, we can take sort of more in-depth views of where there's acceleration and deacceleration, possible uncomfort, uh, as well as, of course, broader views to this. Um, so while this is static, um, this is not going to move. Uh, these are really captured in time uh, on average results. Um, we can also go ahead and run um, transient functions on this. So I have brought in uh, the compute results from the SimScale solution uh, as transient and uh, I will show you quickly that. This is computed on 
the work pinch, so I didn't have to post process this. I simply had to import the data. Um, and uh, what I've done with this is I've simply added the transient result and uh, gone and opened up my sequencer and added that result, the meshes itself that came in, uh, under the sequencer and have remapped uh, that to be a little bit faster. Uh, I've also remapped it to set at zero and I remapped it to loop. And that's all I had to do with the mesh. So if you look at the actors here again, it is that wind comfort surface that I brought in and dragged onto the sequencer. And all I have to do now is press the play button uh, and I will see the transient results of, uh, of the compute that has happened on the cloud. Uh, and I can go and animate this, capture this, analyze this, timestamp it, whatever I want to do inside of NVIDIA Omniverse. Now, of course, we are looking at the design option here. And the reason why we're also separating these geometries is that while we're working in a massing phase at the moment, really early stage and looking at the big moves, um, that exact same model can get updated with more detail, maybe a combination of Revit and SketchUp and Rhino, or maybe ARCHICAD files that are all making up the detail model up to BIM level or construction level. And we can simply replace this massing model with a detail model to give a much more, much more convincing uh, story to tell about why we are doing certain moves in our design, why we are changing certain functions, and how we can make the actual building as well as the environment around the building more comfortable for the occupants and the pedestrians. So I hope that's been useful for you. We've looked at taking multiple uh, 3D applications, bringing that into NVIDIA Omniverse, taking that geometry within Omniverse, which is agnostic and open in a USD format, compiling that into scenes, pushing that to SimScale's workbench, computing CFD on the cloud, and bringing down the results in two methods, directly through the extension or sideloading it from a download into Omnibus. We've also showed you how to post-process that, uh, and we've done it through the static method. And I've also showed you the transient uh, way of bringing uh, the, the geometry in as animated files. There will be more on this, and I hope this has been uh, useful for you for helping you with some scale inside Omniverse.